Conan was my very first Kickstarter. I read the rules to this game, and I fell in love with the mechanics, and I'll explain how that all works. Now, I'm not a Conan fan. I don't know Robert E. Howard's work too much through the novels, and I didn't like any of the movies. But I don't mind a fantasy setting for a miniatures game. This is a one versus many game. One person is the overlord. He controls all of the, the minions, the bad guys. And he has this book of Skelos. And this is how he keeps track of who he can activate, how much they cost, and all that sort of stuff. The other players are Conan and company. Now, this is not a campaign game like Descent or Imperial Assault. This is a one-off scenario game. Each one of these scenarios plays like its own separate game. And they have different amount of starting heroes. Two players can play at any count. It's not that big of a deal to control three or even four heroes if you're the hero player. The game comes with two double-sided boards and the uh, Overlord book has eight scenarios based on those boards. Let me show you how the game plays. Okay, so it's the hero's turn and this is why I fell in love with the rules for this game. This is their starting health and their gem supply. As the hero player, I'm gonna choose who goes first and does what. So they're gonna pick their stance they're going to take an aggressive stance, which means they can do actions, and they would only get two gems back if they had have used any of the previous rounds. If, if I had have had a bunch of exhausted gems, I could choose to do a cautious stance, which would give me five gems back, but all I can do is defend when you do that. So, Shivatis is going to... He's got an ability where he's not hindered by other people, so he's going to use one of his movement points. He can go three movement. He's going to move into here. Um, he still has uh, two movement points left. Conan is going to use his two points of movement. It's going to cost him one movement extra because there's an, uh, a guy in his spot. He's going to move out there. Then Conan is going to do a complex manipulation. I'm going to put two gems here, which will give me two orange dice. Now what I want to do is throw my sword over to Shavatis so he can use it. So I'm going to roll... I got one success. So my sword is going to go one space away. Now Shavatis, he can use a gemstone, sorry. He can use a simple manipulation, which means I don't have to roll to catch it. So Shavatis caught this sword. Since he used an action, his free movement points is up, but he can still spend gems on getting additional moves. There's a little red number that it tells you what your maximum amount of gems you can spend per turn. So with Conan's sword, Shavatis is going to attack. He's going to put two gems there, which will give me two orange dice. And then I'm going to add my weapon dice, which is a orange dice. And I'm going to roll to attack. Only one hit. Well, you know what? I'm going to put two dice into my reroll box. There's no limit to the amount of times I can do that. I'm going to roll again. Three hits. These little pirates have an automatic armor of one. The overlord can now decide if he wants to spend some of his gems to add dice to a defense. He's not going to bother. He's just going to let one of these guys die. All right. Next, Conan is going to jump off the balcony. Now, in this scenario, it specifically says what your... Uh, which skills apply. They all have different skills at the bottom. Since Conan has leap... He would only take one red damage from falling instead of two. So Conan's going to take one damage, which means one of his gems goes to a wounded. So he just jumped off this railing. He landed there. And now I'm going to go back to Shavatis. He wants to move. He's going to take a gem, put it in his movement. He's going to go one square. I want to go one more. He's going to move there. The heroes decide they don't want to spend any more gems this turn. They decide to let the overlord go. Now it's the Overlord's turn. He acts very similarly to the heroes with a few differences. This board here is called the Book of Skelos. These tiles all represent 
his units on the map, but there's little colored borders here that'll correspond with the bases of the guy. So the Overlord turn starts out. He is going to get five gems recovered this turn. And again, this is something the scenario will tell you what to use. It could be five, it could be this, and it could be three and seven. So the Overlord can activate any two of his tiles. This bird one here is the event tile. And again, the scenario is gonna give him special things he can do with that tile. Um, in this scenario, he can recruit guys that have been killed back onto the board. And he can, uh, the other event that lets him do is swap any two tiles. So this, these numbers here is how many gems it's gonna cost him to use it. So I would probably just spend one gem here to use Zapavro, my captain. He goes at the back. Now I can use him again as my second top, but he's gonna cost me eight if I do it. So his movement is two, so um, where's the part, bro? He's right here. He's gonna go uh, one, and then he'll roll his attack dice on Conan. Conan can choose to um, add dice to his defense roll. He's gonna get whatever dice his armor gives him. In this case, his leather armor will give him a yellow dice. And if he wants to spend a gem on his little uh, uh, shield symbol on his card. He's gonna get his uh, Weapon parry bonus if it has it. So if his sword has the, the shield symbol, he'll add that dice Plus one dice per gem that he wants to spend on it. So as a Pavro could attack, he would go to the back of the line and then um, I'll activate the captain. I'll spend another two. The captain will come back. I'll move the captain one, two into this square, and then I'll attack. So really, that is the essence of the game. That's the game engine. Um, there's a few other things like uh, this here will track the hit point of the captains. Most of the minions have one. Uh, this is the round timer. Some of the uh, some of the games, the Overlord has to uh, wait out the timer or or hold off the heroes until it hits a certain amount, depending on the scenario. He always, the Overlord always moves this up at the start of your turn. There's a myriad of different skills that both the bad guys and the good guys have, and they all come on these cards here. Some skills are completely useless depending on the scenario, like swimming is not gonna do anybody any good in this hotel. But one cool skill I do like is this wall wrecker skill. Conan's got this. Let's just, this lets him spend a couple of extra gems to smash through wooden walls that are on the same level. So, if Conan wanted to, he can smash through here and there's a token for it and then back out the other side. It just really brings that theme of this big, strong barbarian like kicking down walls, hacking and slashing. Perform a complex manipulation to pick chests and the scenario will tell you what is gonna go into the chest deck and the player will randomly draw one. All right, let's go back up top and I'll tell you what I think. Okay, so that is Conan. So, like I said, this was the first game that I kickstarted. I could not believe all of the, the stretch goals that were getting released and all the miniatures that were coming with this thing. I was so excited. I remember last October, I'm like, Conan's gonna be in any time, I can't wait for this game. And it got delayed for a year. Now, I understand Kickstarters are usually gonna be late, and now, if a game was a year late, I probably wouldn't even bat an eye. So, what do I think? Well, one of the things that I didn't like at first ends up becoming something that I do like. I mentioned all the stretch goals and stuff like this. The uh, Kickstarter came with all these minis, but it's not one of those games where you can just throw these guys into a campaign. They have to be designed into a campaign. So I figured, well, what's the point in having all of these minis when there's nowhere to actually use them? Because there's no point system for bad guys. You can't swap out the pirates and put in the skeletons or the mummies. Well, you can, but the, the scenario is not balanced for that. And I would love to see some kind of a, a point system where you can swap things out for a bit of variety. Now, there is some extra scenarios 
in the Kickstarter that does use some of the minis. But I ended up getting some add-ons and I realized like there's nowhere to use these. I'd, I'd have to make up my own scenarios. Um, which ends up becoming something that I really like. This is a game engine and they're giving you this engine and all the ingredients you need to make up your own stories. For any budding game designer, Conan is an awesome first step because you've got the mechanics of the game that gives you so much room to work with and all these miniatures. So this is something that my son and I are going to sit around and we're going to try and create stories and we're going to have fun playtesting the balance of these. So initially I just thought we can throw whatever into the game and I thought that would be awesome. Like there is a uh, an extra equipment deck that in games like this I'd love to just shuffle it in because it gives you more variety. That's not the case. Each scenario tells you exactly what items are going to be available in your chests. But playing the game, I really am okay with that because each game, each scenario is almost like um, its own Conan game with that game engine with the gems and the, uh, the openness to it. Speaking of the gems, I absolutely love the kinetic feel that this game gives you. There's it's such a, a brilliant idea having that interconnected turn where the guys can just spend gems however they want and and um, you know team up that way create teamwork one guy can kick open a door and then the thief can run in and pick the lock and then Conan can you know s attack a guy in that square and then once that guy's dealt with the other guy can do a rain shot at someone else the ideas that these uh, scenarios came up with were really thought out and they all differ from one another enough to give it its own flavor. There's this one scenario when it's got two boats on one side of the board and you only use one for the first, it's the first half of one. You're basically chasing down this other boat. If the heroes succeed, then you go to the part two and you've caught up to the boat and then there's a whole other story. And each scenario gives you a little bit of a flavor text and I think they were really inspired by uh, Robert E. Howard, the, the author of Conan, and that's that's this Conan. This is the the Conan based on the novel. Not the Arnold Schwarzenegger Conan. Although there is a camel uh, with the stretch goals. This system, I'm just in love with it. The, the combat flows. Um, some of the scenarios, really, you can play in like 20 to 30 minutes when it's all set up. And, uh, and the games come down to the wire. The games, the scenarios also create... A narrative when you're done with it. My wife Jess and I played last night and we're in this inn and I thought I had her. It was turn eight. She had one turn. Conan was carrying this chest towards the outside of the inn and I piled on him with all these pirates and he couldn't make it out. So she used her other guy, Shavatis. He runs down, throws this hand grenade type thing, kills Conan and the guys, has some movement points to jump over the counter pick up the chest and make her way to the exit just in the nick of time spending his last gem. It was an awesome win for Jess and just so much fun for both of us. This game is a huge thumbs up. It's one of my all time favorite games. I can't wait to start painting up this game. I can't wait for more expansions, more content. I mean the miniatures themselves are really good. There's a uh, there's a couple in there that are a different color and they're kind of subpar, like uh, the lion that came in the box. Uh, but for the most part, the miniatures are really good. They're not the best quality, but they're they're solid and well worth painting. Some of them are amazing, like the giant snake and stuff like that. The uh, components are awesome. The book of Skelos that the Overlord uses is great. The reference cards for all the skills, um, great idea putting them onto there. Uh, the dice are good. Uh, gemstones, whatever. It would have been nice, maybe a luxury item, to have the player boards with, uh, like, indented so the gems can't accidentally slide from one section to the other, but that's very minor. Um, it comes with tons of cardboard tokens. It comes with cardboard tokens that 
um, aren't for any of the scenarios in the book. They're just like, here you go, find a way to integrate these into your games. If, if you're the type of person that wants, that gets excited on designing your own maps and stuff like this, this game's going to appeal to you for sure. If you like dudes on the maps miniature combat game, this is going to appeal to you for sure. I really like that it's not a campaign style leveling up game. I do enjoy those games, but it's almost impossible for me to get a steady group together playing the same game all the time. It doesn't require that commitment, so I'm so happy I can just flip open to a scenario, set it up, and get into it. The biggest gripe with the game is that after raising over three million dollars on Kickstarter and being a year late, taking two years to produce, the English rulebook is full of holes, it's full of problems. It wasn't the end of the world for me, the game was still playable, and I am I can ask questions on, on Board Game Geek, and it's not long before I get an answer, or at least uh, everyone's best guess of an answer. But if you're not familiar with Board Game Geek, if you're just a Conan fan and this was your first board game and you weren't aware of it, you're going to be asking a lot of questions, and I think that is ridiculous. And I think Monolith should have been more active than they have been on the forums. Let's use Chris Cantrell from Riot Games. Mechs vs. Minions, when that game came out there was some rulebook problem. I'd have a hard time finding a thread that doesn't have Chris answering questions directly. And that is the best. Ignacy Trevichek from Portal Games, they are the same way, they'll answer everything. And I think because the onus was on them, they should have been active in the, in the forums, giving us direct answers to stuff. Not the end of the world, but I wish they would have. They are coming out with a version 2 of the rulebook. But uh, when, you, when, you, when you even get Fantasy Flight to proofread your rulebook and it still has problems, it's annoying. This gets my Dice Tower seal of excellence. I love this game. It's my game of the year and probably in my top five games of all time. Thanks everyone for watching and give me a thumbs up if you liked this video and please leave a comment in below and tell me what you think. All right, bye everyone. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.